Yeah, well, the situation was that um, two women were um, out having a meal in town um, and uh, they left the casino and they were uh, just in the Abbott Street area of, of the casino um, when they were approached by a group of persons for a cigarette. Um, a conversation ensued um, during which that um, devolved into a um, physical assault upon the two women. Um, now, what we wish to do is obviously if complaints been made in regards to the injuries suffered by the, the victims of the assault and uh, we've released some images of the persons of interest to the investigation um, and what we'd be requesting is anyone who may recognise these women, the images are quite good quality and, um, and particularly of the larger of the two women, um, should well be recognised to a whole range of people in this community. Um, so what we'd be requesting is for that information to be conveyed to either the Cairns CIB directly, Cairns Police, or to Crime Stoppers. In what manner were they assaulted? Oh, this is just a physical, physical blows. Um, I believe a cigarette was flicked on one of the women, which caused a, a, a minor burn. Um, it was just a general melee type assault that they were subject to. Um, did the women suffer any major injuries? Oh, look, there was bruising and, and in general, contusions that, that were associated with, with the assault. Um, and then and, and a minor burn injury from, from the cigarette. Um, it wasn't inherently, you know, a serious, serious injuries, albeit this is an unprovoked assault. People are just going about their business. They should be able to do that. Um, but it, 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 again, it's more of the nature of the assault that, you know, here we've got two women just going about their business attacked. Um, and we'd like to resolve it. You know, it's, uh, it's certainly in the, everyone's interest that we try to suppress this type of activity. Was there any motive behind it? Did they steal anything? No, no, it appears to be just, you know, they've, they've been approached with cigarettes. Um, there's been a discussion, you know. You know, now presumably alcohol's involved, and at least by, by the offender's part, um, it was late at night on a, on a Thursday evening, at about, about 11:30 p.m. So, so yeah, it appears to be just some level of alcohol fueled violence. Is it becoming any more of a problem than it has been? I mean, do, do people who come to the city to behave themselves and have a good time need to be um, a bit more aware? Oh, well, look, and unfortunately there have been a number of instances recently where, where um, assaults have occurred that have been alcohol-related. They occur from time to time. Um, you know, it's unfortunately, it's a, it's a part of the streetscape almost, um, that, you, that, these, that there is violence associated with alcohol consumption. Um, I don't think it's any more prevalent than it has been historically. I think, you know, it, this... You know, a, a party scene with alcohol, and violence, and friction, and unfortunately, it's a national problem. It um, it goes hand in hand with it. What about the fact that sorry, Colleen, that there's women involved? Is that is that shocking? Well, it actually, has been a bit of a trend recently where there have been quite a number of women associated with with this activity. Um, that that is a bit of a is a bit of a is a change in trend, I suppose, of of late over the last number of years, and um, women appear to be probably possibly consuming more alcohol um, and certainly there's a level of violence of it which is which is which is unusual um, but it has been a trend over the last few years I think it has been noted actually in a range of studies that women um, are becoming more involved in this sort of situation which I suppose historically was was a bit of a male domain and, but, uh, and what yeah. about the fact that many mm. of them are indigenous as well oh look I don't know if that's any particular um, um, any particular trends in that regard? All we know is that these women are, are, are indigenous, um, but certainly there are undoubtedly a range of assaults that don't involve in indigenous people in this community. Um, in this particular instance, they are. Yeah. What are police doing to tackle these trends uh, amongst women and more broadly violence in Cairns? Oh, look, there is a range of initiatives. Um, there is a range of um, alcohol control plans. Certainly, we we, in, in uh, conjunction with the licensed premises in town, have got a range of activities to, to reduce the degree of intoxication, um, to control or at least attempt to control the amount of alcohol consumption. Um, certainly we're increasing our patrols. We're out there as much as we possibly can be. 
Um, but unfortunately, these things will, will happen. You know, police can't be everywhere. Um, unfortunately, people have got to, to some degree, be responsible for their own actions. Um, it happens. If we want alcohol community, almost, this is, this is a consequence. Do you think we need to go a step further? Oh, look, to some degree, I think, you know, historically I haven't been, but I think, that, you know, there's certainly the violence that's associated with alcohol now is becoming clear. It's, it's, it's a significant problem. It's a significant problem statewide. I think everyone's aware of it, and there are a range of um, programs in an effort to reduce it. Um, it's, it is a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those pictures are extremely clear. If you're a crook causing trouble and going out and want to dump someone, are you mm -hmm. stupid to do that in Cairns, sort of given the quality of, of the surveillance in the city? Well, you know, it's, it, it, it certainly should act as a, as a deterrent to anyone who, who thinks about it. Um, but unfortunately, thought and alcohol do not necessarily go hand in hand. So these, these matters are usually not premeditated. It's regrettably just a s situation that arises through interaction between people. Um, so, and, and I believe the research indicates that it, that it doesn't necessarily act as, act as a deterrent. But what it does do, it helps us hopefully to clear these offences when they occur. And um, by arguably that two-pronged attack, you know, the fact that the people have been recorded and they have been brought to justice expeditiously, um, I would think is a, is a greater level of deterrent and um, would hopefully give people pause to, pause to uh, consider their actions that the probability is we may be caught. Um, so hopefully that will discourage them, you know, and which is what this effort's about here, to, to um, get those images out there and, and to bring these people before the courts and... Uh, and, sh and communicate to them that quite simply we aren't going to tolerate it. Okay. Just one yeah. question, probably back to Erica. Uh, there was an article in, in the Post about a week ago too that uh, it appears on the surface that a lot of people are too uh, afraid to call with information. Obviously this bloke who found Erica at the bus stop. Is that a, a problem that you're facing at the moment or is this just an isolated Oh situation? look, I don't think there's any evidence anyone is particularly concerned about providing us with information. Um, we're getting a range of information. Um, I don't think there's there's no evidence that I'm aware of that people are withholding information because of some level of fear or concern. Um, no, so I, I disagree. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Thank you. Cool, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.